This conference will now be recorded. Okay, now let us talk about prior year acquisitions. Prior year acquisitions. What we are going to do with respect to prior year acquisitions during your data migration. Let's assume that if you are talking about prior year acquisition, which represents asset purchased before your go live year. If you are going live in fiscal year 2023, if you purchase the asset before your go live, which is 2023, in short, up to 2022, whatever the asset you purchase is called as prior year acquisition. For this prior year acquisition, the treatment of your depreciation calculation is different. Now, how this treatment for depreciation calculation is different, let's try to understand now. We'll take another asset. Let me take same asset like Dell Latitude Laptop, let's say, 2390 some model or 3490 I'll put purchase date as 22nd June 2017 purchase date is 22 June 2017 let's put purchase value maybe 85,000 and supplier or vendor I'll say chroma let's assume this is the information related to your prior year acquisition and we have to calculate the migration values for this asset same table we are going to take whatever we took let's take the same table And same example as in that we have discussed yesterday for our go live. Now asset number I am going to take, let's say AST128 double slash. Some dummy number I am taking, ignore this. First one is representing your legacy asset number. Second one is representing your SAP asset number only for the understanding purpose. Next one asset purchase date. According to the requirement, we are assuming asset is purchased on 22nd June 2017. Let me put 22 June 2020, sorry, 2017. Now asset APC, APC is nothing but purchase value. Purchase value is 85,000. Depreciation and all we are going to calculate now. Let's put this in number format. Here I'll put go live date what was the date we took let's take anything 13 May 2023 and go live fiscal year will be 2023 now you will have to calculate the numbers until 2023. Now this is your prior year acquisition. There will be a slight difference in the prior year acquisition. Now here we are writing accumulated depreciation. In this accumulated depreciation, I am going to split this. I am going to put split accumulated depreciation into two parts. Accumulated depreciation now, when are we going live? We are going live in 2023 fiscal year. If you are going live in 2023 fiscal year for prior year acquisition, which means assets purchased till 2022, you need to calculate depreciation until last year. What is last year? 2022. Your accumulated depreciation is until 2022. Okay, accumulated depreciation is until 2022 and then you have current year depreciation. This is until 2023 April. Okay, this is until 2023 April. 
these two things we'll have to segregate in the current year acquisition there is no point of previous year so we took everything as accumulated depreciation but when it comes to prior year acquisition you have to split your total depreciation into two parts current year depreciation when when we talk about current year you are representing current financial year or current fiscal year from period number one until your go live date if you are going live on may month you will have to consider until april month that is one set of depreciation the other set of depreciation will be previous year accumulated figure if you are going live in 2023 your previous year will be 2022 until 2022 you need to take the number okay calculations will remain as it is but the only point is you are segregating or you are splitting the depreciation number point number one let's take this as five years useful life method first one i'm going to take five years useful life method now when did we purchase this asset we purchased the asset in 2017 same example fiscal year is jan to december this is the assumption that we are going ahead to calculate the numbers so here what we are going to do is i am going to put years i am going to put years first i am going to start with the year in which the asset was purchased asset was purchased in the year 2017 i'll take 2017 next 2018 2019 2020 2021 2022 2023 which is current year how many years it has crossed now it has crossed more than six years currently we are in seventh year if you look at this scenario how many years we have taken five years so let's increase this to let's say eight years let's assume the useful life is eight years if you take useful life as five years this asset has got no value this must have already been deactivated or retired from the system there will be no value if the asset exceeds the life unless they want to maintain any memo value or minimum value in the asset to show the asset as active in the system so considering eight years you'll have to count if your asset is within eight years or not at the end of current year which is 2023 for year next you'll have to take depreciation per annum only you'll have to take you'll have to take depreciation per annum until 2022 this is one treatment until 22 is one treatment 2023 is another treatment okay current year is a different treatment until previous year is another treatment now per annum is how much how you are going to calculate what is your depreciation per annum it is straightforward depreciation per annum will be is equal to apc value divided by life which is eight years is this correct 10625 is your per annum depreciation copy this 10625 here Put the same amount every year until previous year. This is your 10,625. You have to remember the year in which you purchased and the year in which you are currently going live. These two years, which means your first year, last year may not be complete. Your first year may be partial. Your last year may also be partial. Assuming our last year is partial, our first year is also partial. Our scenario is our reporting structure is January to December. But when did we purchase? We purchased on 22nd June 2017. If this is the date when we purchased the asset in the year of 2017, this is not fully used. This is partially used. Okay, what I am going to do? I am going to calculate number of days in this year 2017. So I am going to take January, February, March, April, May, June, 
ஜூலை செப்டம்பர் அக்டோபர் நவம்பர் டிசம்பர் something i missed where did i go wrong august august is missing 12 months let's take number of days in each month january let us take 31 days february 29 this is 31 april 30 days may 31 june 30 july 31 august 31 again september is 30 october is 31 november is 30 december is 31 now if you do a total you are getting 366 days this is the reason we are taking per year depreciation divided by 366 now you have to take number of days in 2017 in 2017 we are using a set from june onwards so from june i have to count in june if i say 22nd how many days we are using in june month from 22nd 9 days we have to include that purchase date also 22 also how many days it will be 8 or 9 9 days 9 days it will be 9 days i am going to use 9 days here and from here all the days i am going to use from here i am going to use all the days in total how many days we are using in 2017 this asset 193 days am i correct number of days we have used asset in 2017 is 193 days clear this calculation yes sir yes sir. now after calculating this let's calculate depreciation per month as usual per annum depreciation divided by 12 months per day depreciation as usual per annum depreciation divided by 366 days okay divided by 366 days now in 2017 we have used a set only for 193 days so here in 2017 this will not be 10265 instead this will be 193 days multiplied by per day depreciation this correct yes sir okay i'll put this copy paste values this is your 2017 depreciation 2018 asset is fully utilized so full year depreciation straight forward 10625 2019 20 to 21 until 22 it is the same now when it comes to 2023 this is again partial in 2023 you have to start counting from this is 2017 okay this is 2023 in 2023 january you have asset completely february you have asset completely march you have completely april you have completely may may month is when we are going live your go live month you are not going to charge depreciation okay for go live month you are going to directly calculate the depreciation in sap you need to count depreciation until your go live previous month which is april until april how many days we are using here sorry is equal to sum only this four months how many days 121 days is what we are using in 2023 is this correct clear the number of days of 2023 clear up yes sir we are going live in the month of may so you are not considering may month you are only going to consider previous month which is april so january february march april we have used these four days sorry these four month number of days is 121 what i am going to take here in 2023 121 days multiplied by per day depreciation this much 
this will be my depreciation for 2023 until April. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Now, here when it comes to depreciation, please be on mute if you are not talking. If you have any question, you can unmute, but otherwise, please be on mute. Here we need to segregate depreciation into two categories depreciation until previous year and depreciation until previous month of current year. So when you're talking about previous year, you have to consider your go live year accordingly take previous year. If you're going live in 2023, your previous year will be 2022 accumulated depreciation until 2022. Next one for current year, you have to consider go live month. And take the previous month. If you are going live in May month, you have to consider current year depreciation until April month. Here, I need to take the depreciation until 2022, which is 2017 plus 2018 plus 2019 plus 2020 plus 2021 plus 2022. Okay, this will be my accumulated depreciation until last year, which is 2022. Similarly, for current year depreciation is a straightforward 2023, Jan, Feb, March and April depreciation, which is this much. Now, your net book value will be your APC value minus accumulated depreciation until last year minus accumulated depreciation until current year previous month if i do this i am coming sorry i am getting the number of 22759.56 this is the current netbook value as on or this is the opening balance into your sap for may 2023 is this number clear how we got this number Again, when it comes to calculation of your depreciation, did we do anything new or same calculation, same logic? Same calculation, sir. Right, we are using same calculation, same logic. There is no change in the logic. There is no change in the calculation method. Okay, this is only a scenario change, but logic, your calculation will remain the constant, will remain same. Next one, let us take one more asset. Assuming I'll take asset number 339. Let's take some other number. Here I'll take second March 2020. APC value, let us take 1 lakh 43,876. Let's put everything in number format and this depreciation let's take 15 percent straight line method if i take this as 15 percent straight line method how i am going to calculate the number now how will i calculate this number so let me put this number here so that you will not get confused Okay, this is for this asset. Now let's calculate for this asset. Now let me calculate for this asset. When did we purchase this asset? In which year? 2020. Did we use the asset in 2020 fully or partially? Partially, sir. In 2020, asset was used partially. What I am going to do, I am going to start my calculations from 2020. These are all not applicable. So I am not changing anything here. I will just put 0. Make this to number format. So that when I put 0, it will become blank. 
2018 there is no asset 19 there is no asset 2020 you have an asset right before you commit or before you arrive at a depreciation figures first let us find out what is our per annum depreciation here we are going to use depreciation method as 15 percent straight line method what i'll do here logic remains the same is equal to apc value multiplied by 15 percentage this is your per annum depreciation based on the per annum let us calculate per month your per month will be per annum depreciation divided by 12 months per day depreciation will be per annum depreciation divided by 366 days now let's compute this depreciation figures for this asset 2020 we have purchased the asset on what date 2nd march so i'll put these two with this color where is this color okay when you refer the excel sheet just go through go by these colors for this asset and look at this color for your calculation now we purchased this in march so in 2020 in 2020 january there is no asset i'll take zero february there is no asset zero march there is an asset march from second we have an asset from march second till 31st march how many days we have used this asset 30 days 30 days we have used for 30 days i'll take 30 days and from next month onwards it is there completely so i'll take the total days here if i count the total number of days i am getting 305 days correct in 2020 we used this asset only for 305 days what i am going to do i am going to calculate yearly depreciation for 2020 which is your first year i am going to take number of days which is 305 multiplied by per day depreciation which is 58.97 if i do this i got 17,984 now for this second year onwards my depreciation will be straight away per annum depreciation correct because in 2021 in 2022 you have used the asset completely am i correct so i am going to take full year depreciation which is total year or 366 days depreciation again in 2023 we used asset partially or fully the go live year in the go live year again asset is used partially you have used asset until april only because you are not supposed to consider go live month so what i am going to do i am going to take this i'll put 2020 and here this will be 2023 in 2023 january 31 february 29 march 31 days april 30 days total we have used 121 days for 121 days what will be the depreciation for 2023 for this asset this will be 121 days multiplied by per day depreciation this is the number correct i'll copy paste this figures next one if i have to split the number here accumulated depreciation until 2022 that will be 2020 plus 2021 plus 2022 correct next one for 2023 it will be straight away 2023 depreciation amount which is this what will be the netbook value which is your same formula 
APC minus depreciation until last year minus depreciation until current year last month. This will be your net book value for this asset. Is this calculation clear? For all the assets yes, so far, whatever we did, are we going in the same logic? Or we are changing any logic for calculating the numbers? And we are going can ahead with. Explain. Hello. Yeah. Sir, can you please explain one uh, period method or also how calculate? Which one? Period method. If you are considering period method, there is no point of this day wise depreciation. Straight away, you are going ahead with per month. Okay. okay, you are not going to consider per day depreciation if you are using period control method period control method will straight away eliminate your daily depreciation so that we will talk when you are actually on the system because that is straightforward now let's take the third situation or third scenario wherein we will take wdv method i'll take asset 657 double slash some SAP number let's say one to some other number now let's assume this asset is purchased on 11th April 2022 11th April 2022 assuming the asset is purchased for 25,899 Now we'll take this as 10% WDV method. Considering this, what will be the depreciation calculations? Let me take this color for this two. Okay, I'm switching these two also to right side. Next, I'll take, we are purchasing this asset in 2022. We need 2022 plus 2023. In this case, did we use asset for the first year fully, which is your 2022 or partially? No, partially. Partially. Right. For 2022, this was used partially. Current year, which is your go live year, also this asset is used partially. In 2022, we purchased this on 11th April. So for 2011, let me insert one more column here. This is your third asset. For this, let me put another color. Okay. Twenty seven, there is no asset. Twenty eight, twenty nine, all this, there is no asset. We purchased this in two thousand twenty two. In two thousand twenty two, this is purchased in the middle of the year. When you purchase the asset in the middle of the year, accordingly, we'll have to calculate the number. From when we have the asset, we have the asset from April onwards. Go to your April month, April 30 days. But out of 30 days, how many days we used in April? 20 days. From, from 11 till 30. 20 days. Now, from here, it is the same. Until December, you have used it. I am going to put the same number. Now, I am going to do a total for these days. In 2022, we used to asset for 265 days. Is this clear? 2022, we used this asset for 265 days. Next one for 2023, it is your go live year. You are going to consider 
depreciation until go live month previous month if your go live month is may you are going to consider previous month of may which is april i am going to take 31 days jan 29 feb 31 march 30 april here it will be this so is equal to some this plus or i'll simply put this plus this plus this 121 days we used 121 days in 2023 265 days in 2022 now how we are going to calculate this depreciation let's find out here first let's calculate per month sorry per annum depreciation per annum depreciation here is 10% wdv you are going to get per annum depreciation by applying apc value into depreciation rate 10% This is your 2,589 depreciation per annum for first year and second year, which is your per month depreciation. Second year, or this is your first year. Now here I am not going to put per month per day depreciation because this is your WDV method. In WDV method, every year is the number going to change or it will remain same. will change change for wdv method every year number will change first these two are fixed because this two are first one is useful life method in useful life method every year depreciation number will remain same on the straight line method also every year depreciation number will remain the same for wdv method every year your calculation gets updated so first year it will be a different calculation for second year it will be a different calculation so i am going to put here year 1 okay i'll put a different color for this 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 will be year 1 for first year per annum is this per month will be 12 and per day depreciation is this divided by 366 and for second year there will be a different calculation for 2022 your depreciation will be how much how many days we used 265 days multiplied by per day depreciation in first year which is this this will be your depreciation for first year you have taken 121 days we need to take this is 2022 okay 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 fine Okay, this is 2022. Okay, okay. Okay, at the end of 2022, you need to recalculate depreciation for 2023 based on net book value of 2022. For that, what I need to do, we need to put these figures again. For second year, your number will get updated. Okay, I am calculating the number here. Here, I'll put. let me insert one more row or i'll insert here i'll put let me insert a column here okay otherwise i'll put netbook value here then we'll calculate for two years separately accumulated depreciation for 2022 will be this much 1875 and 2023 there is no depreciation because we are going ahead with wdv for wdv we need to do calculation separately for every year so this will be zero net book value at the end of 2022 will be apc minus this 
now for the second year we have to recalculate the number for second year what will be the number depreciation per annum on net book value we are going to put 10 percent is this correct is my number correct for second year yes. based on wdv right, right i'll put this number for second year per month depreciation will be this per day depreciation will be this now accumulated depreciation until 2022 will remain as it is i am going to take the same number here okay i am going to take same number here and in 2023 you are going to take four months depreciation which is this multiplied by four months 121 days this will be the number now at the end of your 2023 april your net book value will be your net book value will be this minus only this number because this is already deducted here correct because i am taking this number sorry not this my APC minus, let me take these two. 2022 depreciation minus 2023. This will be the actual figure for 2023. Is this number correct? So let me highlight your netbook values with this color. These are the three numbers. WDV method, any confusion, any doubt? If you get any doubt, you may have to get confused for WDB alone. Because for the same asset, we did two years, two different calculations. Because WDB method, your depreciation will change every year. Correct? That is the reason we calculated separately for 22, 23. If it is purchased in 2020, 2021 or 2020, every year you have to calculate your netbook value. Clear with these calculations? Yes. Now, this is the first point that we have to understand when we want to learn about asset data migration in any project. Now, the data that your client is providing is going to contain this information. What, why we are going to do all these calculations is to ensure that the data that is provided by your client is properly calculated and you are verifying when you load this data into SAP, same figures are going to come or different figures are going to come. Wherever you find the calculation is slight different, the number is coming in a different way, you have to notify your client. According to your cal calculation, this is what the number we are getting. But according to our SAP configuration, this is how system is going to calculate the depreciation. You have to convince your client Otherwise, they will tell, no, my numbers are not matching. They will simply tell my trial balance that I have given to you is not matching with the trial balance that you have given to me. Okay, these kind of points we are not supposed to receive, especially when it comes to data migration. Point to point, we have to tally. Right, so I want everybody to focus on this number. This is your prior year acquisition. Once you focus on this, now, nothing much to be focused on this. The logic, calculation, everything is same as we have discussed in the previous session as you are already aware of it. It is just that you have to take one or two examples of your own, of any year of your choice, any date of your choice, any amount of your choice. Make sure you are able to calculate the numbers on the Excel sheet and then you are able to verify that your calculation is correct. While doing these things, I want everybody to focus on the basic Excel formulas. How you are calculating totals, deductions, percentages and all. These basic calculations, I want everybody to focus. Because tomorrow when you are in a project as a FICO consultant, you are supposed to know basic Excel working. Okay, you don't need to be an expert in Excel, but at least basic things calculations, formulas, VLOOKUPs, these kind of things you must know at least to manage yourself. 
okay clear with this right all right then so if this is clear we'll stop today i have some work i'll have to i have to step out let me stop this recording